go. So the original 5.0, which is the car that everybody asks about first, is right there. That is the original Ice Ice Baby car. Come on in. With the rag top down, so your hair could blow? Oh that yeah. One? I would never put the top up on that. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, man. I've had this car since way back in the showroom. You know, you wanna see something cool? Trunk is even 90s. Everything is 90s. Yo, is that a 15 in the back? Yes. <laughs> I used to sell car stereos, so I, I know this. False gate, I used to have, and, and people in Ice Ice Baby think that the word uh, Vega is Vegas. It's no. Serwin Vegas. Serwin Vegas, yeah, exactly. See, only, you know that. Yeah, I know that. So many people think, why is he talking about Vegas? It's yeah. not Vegas. Serwin Vega. Yeah. It's a speaker, dual voice coil, 650 Rockford False gate. You ready for this? Will that give you a boner or what? That is not the stock <laughs> engine. No. That is not the stock no. 5.0 engine at no. all. No. <laughs> I got 1,100 horsepower in this thing. Yo, can we take a look at the engine real quick? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the horsepower on this? 1,100 horsepower. 1,100 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got a whole drag race, uh, rear end and differential, transmission, everything. Okay. I, I don't think it's a real 5.0, but it's got some power. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be called the 5.0 forever, no matter what. Yo, is that a Model T Ford? Okay, so this is not a Model T. It's an Oldsmobile, 1918. Whoa, it's 100 okay. and something years old. 105 years old. 105 year old. This is a, uh, yeah, Oldsmobile. So it's much longer wheelbase than a uh, Model T. So these were the expensive version. Huh. Oldsmobile actually built the uh, motors in the Model T. So they went on their own and built their own cars. And this was one of the original Oldsmobile. Still runs great, by the way. And it does. 50. Wait, wait, you could, you could ride this right I now. I drive this thing and goes 50 miles an hour. People okay. don't think that in 1918, the cars went that fast. I got three gears in this thing and I've had it over at 55 miles an hour okay. on those tires. Damn, um, it, okay. It feels like it's gonna fall apart, but right. it'll do it. Those are so thin, look at those things. It'll do oh, it. Wait, wait, are those wooden rims? Yeah, those are wooden rims, man. Yo, that's wild. And you know what's really crazy? I think that's like a 28 size. <laughs> You're rolling on 28. You're rolling on 28 <laughs> back in 18, bro. Look, I got 28s right here. Yeah, like right 28s. here. Yeah, 28. <laughs> This is a very famous car. Dale Earnhardt Sr., first race car called the Saturday Night Special. There's wow. a million books. This has been on the cover of every magazine and stories all over the place about this car. He had a little cheat button right here that he took a paper clip that he hid right down in his race suit and he'd pull it out and he'd stick in this little pinhole and it would advance the timing, which was highly illegal. And they wrote a whole story on that. So there's stories in, about this car and interviews I do just about the car. Uh, how much is this worth roughly? Three million. Three million dollars. This car's worth three million. This was uh, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy punched. Uh, he punched Eddie Murphy right here in this car. Nick Nolte did. This 40, is 48, 48 hours? hours car. Yeah. This was the blue Cadillac. And I got this from Hollywood Cars. I've had this longer than any of my collector cars. Uh, and uh, I did a movie with Nick Nolte called Ridiculous Six. And he told me the story about this and about him getting punched in the face, uh, how he punched Eddie Murphy in the face and Eddie Murphy's bodyguards came in from offset and dragged Nick Nolte out of the car by his neck, mm. threw him on the ground and started punching him because he thought he, because he really hit Eddie and it actually knocked him out. And Eddie comes over and goes, no, 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 no. Get off him, man. It's just an accident. So they had to wait like an extra week because, you know. Heal up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool stuff, man. I've got a number one car here. This is a, uh, a Corvette 1954. And Ooh. when I say number one, it means it's a matching number car, fully original, exactly like it came off the showroom floor in huh. the original state. And uh, it's been documented as a number one car. So everything matches all your serial number and engine. So that's exactly the way everything, and it runs uh, How much is that worth, you think? This one right here is probably worth, mm, I'd probably say, since it's the number one car, it's not a celebrity car, probably 200, 250. Okay. That's still an expensive car, you yeah. know? 
being a number one it makes it expensive but uh this one i've got 150,000 bucks in it man oh uh, yeah this is crazy this is my my newest look at these rims the dayton's see the vanilla deville no they're way beyond dayton's these are custom cuts okay these are all hand etched everything is hand etched so the entire underside is gold and hand etched the underside is gold let me see what yeah. i can show you everything every bumper i got first place in the lowrider oh, oh, show oh, this has some hydraulics Fully hydraulic. Oh, okay. Swivel seat. Look at the seat. All oh. the seats swivel. Okay. See that? All your switches are here. Ugh. Now look at the back. Look underneath this thing. The whole underside is gold. Everything's and, and gold. Engraved. Even my uppers and the front and the lowers. That has my daughter's initials in the in the differential. Yeah. I even did the disc brakes. The disc calipers even have hand etched. Every somebody sat here and did this by hand, by the way. Everything, and it just it doesn't stop. Through the, once you get addicted to that stuff, it's called crazy cut. You just etch, etch, etch. But the lowrider thing is such a big culture. I grew up to that, and it's kind of funny how I got into it because it was the only way as a kid. And you might remember this since we're kind of the same age. We couldn't buy a Playboy magazine. We couldn't yeah. buy Hustler. But the closest thing we could buy was a lowrider magazine. Right. With and the girls. The chick with on the, the front. You oh, gave yeah. them two shits about the cars. Yeah. You were like, it's all about the girls. Oh, and then they'd be sticking the... it out on you, boy. Yeah. And that was the, that's the most porno we could get. So I got into it. And then finally, after a few years, I said, oh, yeah, there's some cool cars in there. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the hydraulic system? That's the hydraulics. It's called a whammy tank. Okay. These are two motors. The pumps are all underneath. You won't see them, but that's how it goes. It'll go all sideways and do the whole thing. All lights up, everything is really cool. All, all this, everything piping, there's fiber optics in all of this, even this, and it lights up everything. So, when so easy, detailed. When Easy e said, I got front and back and side to side, he's talking about something like this. Oh yeah, this is an old school. This is, this, yeah. I actually won first place at the Lowrider show for the old school category. Wow. This is, this is exactly what they talk about. Does it about. bounce at all or no? Oh, it'll bounce like crazy, okay. man. <laughs> Woo! I can set this thing up, I can pick that, I can, I can pick the whole car up like this. Uh. Oh, it's powerful. Super powerful. Super powerful. Uh. Pull the whammy tank. It's got like 72 volts. Huh. Crazy, you could weld with it. If you touched it, you'd die. Like literally, that's how many voltage go to the crazy voltage. That's the scariest, most fire hazard thing about this, these cars is that there's 72 volts going through that thing. Huh. It's a lot. You, you driving around Miami? No, I, I, this is a show car. On all these, Just a show car. None of these drive. Okay. I don't drive any of them. Except for the, the 1918 joint. <laughs> Every I, do, so often. I do, on a nice day on, around uh, polo season. Yeah, we, me and my buddies, we do the, it's called the brass. We take them to a brass show. Mm -hmm. And we go out to the, all the old, old cars that are basically 1920 and older. Nothing else newer. <laughs> so you know how this works when I pull out my display. I got all these, these things here that go for the low rider, you know? And this is 1922. This is a pedal car, 1922. And I had it fixed up and painted and I built this. I got a jam box under the seat. My daughter sits here. You got the ice baby bottle in the front. <laughs> With the ice inside. I see, I see what you're doing Hey, here. I'm from the 90s. Cheesy is easy. Cheesy is easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we are up in my trophy room from motocross. Uh, I raced back in the 80s and 90s and still race today, but I collected all those trophies from way back in the 80s and uh, still got them here collecting dust for me. And this was not the bike I raced, but a replica of the bike I raced. I wish I had the original, but this was a replica of the bike. Uh, this was a 1985 CR125, a bad monster back in the day. And then I just keep it up here and let it marinate. And you see my, I got some old pictures here and some different things of all the races and <laughs> trophies and championships and different things. But you know, when you work so hard for this stuff, you don't want to ever throw it away. So I collect it, I keep it and I keep it uh, safe up here. I need to come back here and look at this every now and then. I can remember every race, all the laps and what and where this was. All I got to do is just look at, you know, one of these plates on there. Look, 1983, I can tell you I was at Swan MX Raceway right there. I can tell you that Billy Whitley was in that race with me. I got third place. 
and uh, came back the next moto and won. So I got the overall because he got second and second. <laughs> What is this right here? This is Dean Martin's old car. Wait, this is Dean's, Dean Martin's actual car? Yes. Wow. Okay. And this car is a number one car too. That, that's a, that means it's all matching number and fully OG, <laughs> like it was when it came off the showroom. Okay. So it'd be the same wheels, same tires, same everything, like you would see. And uh, this, this car make, is really rare because if you see these vents here, oh. they only made uh, 400. This was the most expensive car in the world in 1956. And this, and they only made 400 of these, and only a hundred of them came with air conditioner, which is this is one of a hundred. Mm. And it has rooftop air conditioner, which was genius because it blows perfect still to this day, right down on your head. It's like man, and, it, and I guess it goes through here somehow, and it's got to come through here, you know. But there's four motors, and uh, considered one of the most luxury cars uh, historically of all time is this one, and it's not called a Lincoln, so this is a Continental. And the company, they tried to make it Continental for two years as a, its own new company. Lincoln, oh. Lincoln was a company, Continental was, is a, ah, a company. Okay. Etzel, uh, and it didn't work for them. So uh, they failed because the car was too expensive. This car was $14,000 in 1956. That car in 1954 was $4,000 and it's years older. So that, this was the most expensive car in the world. So this was like the Rolls Royce of its era. 100%, more yeah. expensive than a Rolls Royce in 56. The most expensive, number one. You can Google it today. What's the most expensive car in 1956? This that will one. pop right up. Okay, now how much is this worth about? This car's probably worth about three, three million. I, I haven't had three it appraised. Three million? Yeah, okay. I've had those appraised. Those, those are up there. This one's probably could even be more because I don't know if that many people, it might not be, it could go down because people might not really remember Dean Martin. They, the kids today, it's really weird, you know? Mm -hmm. Like when people, they don't remember it, it's the value could go down. So I'm hoping people remember Dean Martin and the Rat Pack. Marilyn Monroe rode over here. I've got 400 pages of Marilyn documents. Marilyn Monroe rode in his car. He, he loaned it to Elvis Presley while he was on his uh, Vegas uh, thing at, at wow. in Vegas. We're in a museum Sammy right Davis now. Jr., all the Rat Pack, everybody's been in this car. I've got video, picture, everything uh, of this. So, so we're in a museum right now, basically. We're in a museum. I yeah. have others. I have more. I have 31 cars. 31 cars. 31. How much is your whole car collection worth if you were to add it up? Ooh, Just never did. If I put a value roughly, on it. Roughly. 50 million. $50 million car collection. Probably. Okay, you Maybe win. Maybe more. You win. <laughs> I, I like cars, man. But you know, it's not just about having a bunch of cars. It's about having special cars. Yeah. Celebrity cars are fun. Yeah. They, they, they carry way more value when they have a story behind them. Mm. If you look at Meekum and, and, and the auctions and Barrett Jackson, you'll see that the story cars could be a piece of shit. But if you had the original, cause like the original Bandit car is a turd. 1978 Cadillac or, or I mean, a, a Pontiac was a turd, but the car's worth a crap load of money. It's the Bandit car. Uh. That car was, a pile of crap, man. You could peel up, you peel up the floorboard, and the and you had a hole this big. Watch the road go by. <laughs> <laughs> it was so rusted out when I got it, but it has the serial number from the movie. Hmm. I got the paperwork that says this serial number belonged to this movie, and it's uh, documented. That yeah. makes the car value through the roof. Okay, incredible collection, man. People want the stories of cars, you know, and now they're my cars, and they'll never be sold. Not even after I'm dead. My kids can't sell them. It's in my will. They it's say in your will. They have to keep them. They have to. Huh. Generational. It has to be. You can't. Then they have to take care of them too. It's in there too. The details huh. of how to take care of them are even in there. <laughs> because the value goes up. Listen, every one of these right here is better investment than I've got in any stock market or any house or anything. These are great investments, these cars. Right. If you're yeah. going to set money, why set it in a stock market? Get right. you something like a celebrity owned car, an Elvis car or something and air condition it, keep it safe, and watch what happens in 20, 25 years. Yeah, I mean, But that same amount of money in a stock or in a CD or a trust or any kind of account, watch what it does. It won't It won't excel like this. All right, it's like artwork, basically. Same reason I buy my houses. My houses, I, some of them I've never even seen. And this is a true story. You haven't seen some of the houses you own? Never, and I buy them because I buy tax auctions. I buy tax liens. So I don't buy normal MLS or anything that you're gonna see on Zillow. There's nothing on the computer that I'm gonna be buying. I buy them below the appraised value, way below. And everybody would if they could, but they can't because they don't know my tactic. My tactic is to hire an attorney 
And my attorney goes to the courthouse and he finds out for that day what tax liens in the whole county or anywhere I want to buy a home is, and he'll give them to me. And he says, you owe me my $5,000 retainer, whether you buy a house or not. I don't care what you do with this information. I woke up and got my coffee and went here and got it for you. And now you do it. Mm -hmm. And I go on there and I go, oh my God, look at these houses. I don't need to see them. I don't need to drive by them. Don't need to even care. And I own so many houses that I've never seen because all I need to see is what is the appraised value of that house? And what am I buying it for? Huh. Holy shit, I'm buying it for half of the appraised value. I just made money. You do real estate, you understand that. It's when you buy a house that's worth a million and you pay 500,000 for it. That's what I do. Huh. I, I make money on my houses before I even fix them up, before I even, when I buy them. And do you rent all these houses out? Never rented a house. Never you rent never rented a house. They sit there, so all these houses are empty. cobwebs. Some of them are falling apart. Some of them have grass 10 feet high. Huh. Some of them are just vacant land. Some of them have houses that swimming pool and cockroaches are coming out and they've been there for 25 years and I won't touch them and they are worth a shitload of money compared to what I paid for them 25 huh. years ago. That's the thing with real estate. You get in and then you get out. Whenever you get in, you're gonna get out better than what you did. Even in 08, I do seminars about 08 and the housing during crunch, the housing which scared crunch, people. Yeah. It didn't scare me. Yeah. Well, me. you had money back then. But I also made more money during that. Exactly. If you because had, when, of you, that. when you have money during recessions, you always make out. Whether it's property, stocks, art, Unless jewelry, you're a whatever. Unless you dummy and blow it, yeah. Exactly. So, but but it, uh, the truth is, I profited on it, and I hate to tell people that, but 08 made a profit because I turned around and instead of buying short sales and foreclosures, I learned how to buy tax liens because a lot of tax properties, they you know, if they're not paying their mortgage, they're not paying their tax. Uh -huh. So what happens with the IRS is they eliminate anything. HOA liens, a lien on a house, a mortgage, a second lien, all goes away to the trash. Nobody gets paid. Those people have their own insurance set up, right? IRS takes over. They don't want to sell homes. They want to give them away for only the value of what the back taxes are owed. So oh. you, when you want to talk about what you buy pennies, uh, houses for pennies on the dollar, that's how you do it. Tax liens. Tax liens. Uh -huh. And you have 18 months to reinvest it and not spend any of the capital gains from the profit that you made on the house that you sold. So you have to reinvest it. So you compound it. Yes. And then instead of paying Uncle Sam that money, you just use that money to buy a to bigger buy a new house. house. Yeah. Exactly. And then you went from a million dollars to a $10 million house in a few years. Uh. Real estate will be your best investment. Get out of the stocks, go into real estate. It's much <laughs> easier than you think. Okay. Much easier. Don't let people complicate it. It's very simple.